next we have uh, Dr. Matthias Roth from Dusseldorf, and uh, he will be speaking to us about the clinical picture of ocular involvement in mucous membrane pemphigoid. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, thank you very much for the invitation to talk today about the clinical pictures of ocular involvement in MMP. Let's start right away with some epidemiology. MMP typically occurs in the elderly with a mean age between 60 and 70 years at the time of diagnosis. However, the age of onset may be younger since most patients with early stages of MMP can remain undiagnosed. The ratio male versus female is about equal. No geographic or racial predilection has been described. The incidence of MMP is estimated at approximately one to two new cases per million people annually in Germany and France. And in 2014, the calculated prevalence of MMP was 25 cases per million inhabitants. In order to align the terminology, in the recently published S3 guideline, the following consensus was reached. As the disease in single-site affection may have different characteristics from cases with multi-site involvement, single-site terms as ocular MMP or ocular monocyte MMP should be used in patients with involvement of only one specific mucosal site, in this case the eye. In MMP patients with several affected mucosal sites, involvement of one site can be highlighted, for example, as MMP with ocular involvement. Involved mucosal areas are generally in close contact with the skin. The skin itself is almost always only mildly affected. Oral involvement is most common, followed by ocular involvement in around 70%. Ocular involvement of MMP is considered high risk and comes along with the poorer prognosis. Around a quarter of the cases have ocular only disease without involvement of any other site. It is important to note that this subgroup of cases is significantly less likely to have a positive direct immunofluorescence result. Around 50% of ocular-only cases are diff negative In those cases, the diagnosis needs to be made clinically after differential diagnosis were ruled out. Although we as ophthalmologists can also ask for symptoms affecting other locations, as for example lesions in the mouth, it is important that all patients with suspected or confirmed ocular MMP need to be examined by their respective specialists. Vice versa, patients with MMP of any other location need to be seen by an ophthalmologist because about 70% of MMP patients will develop ocular manifestations as I showed to you. Although Ocular involvement in MMP can occasionally be unilateral, it is usually bilateral. In the beginning, the disease often presents with nonspecific symptoms of chronic ocular surface inflammation. The initial signs and symptoms are very similar to dry eye. Patients complain of redness, tearing, burning, decreased vision and foreign body sensation. This initially non-specific presentation may lead to under-recognition of the disease and to delay of diagnosis. In the following slides, I will present to you the clinical signs as the disease progresses. Those findings form the four stages of the Foster classification, as indicated here below the title. Early clinical signs are conjunctival cicatrition, for example, around the semilunar fold, as in the right picture, ulceration, as well as involvement of the canthal structures. Subepithelial fibrosis manifests as fine gray white stria in the inferior fornix or the tarsal conjunctiva, as shown in the example on the left here. The subepithelial fibrosis in MMP can progress even despite clinical quiescence. A study conducted in the UK found that 42% of patients had disease progression 
in the absence of clinical inflammation. Histological analysis of these patients has found significant inflammatory cellular infiltrate despite the white and quiet clinical appearance of the conjunctiva. This has been termed white inflammation. In stage 2, the subepithelial fibrosis leads to a shortening of the furnaces, as you can see here on the left image. The normal depth of the inferior fornix is a, uh, approximately 11 mm and 15 mm of the superior fornix. The fornix depth should regularly be measured in all MMP patients, as it can be used to measure disease progression and used for staging. As disease progresses in stage 3, symblepharon forms and can lead to a number of complications. Symblepharon can decrease eye movement, as you can imagine if you take a look at the picture in the middle, and thus cause diplopia and prevent the normal functioning of the eyelids through mechanical forces. Furthermore, the adhesion can encroach on the limbus and grow over the cornea, leading to vision loss, as shown here in the image on the right side. In the final stage of the disease, we can find an ankylobrepharon, a complete loss of the furnaces and a keratinization of the ocular surface. The ankyloblepharon may lead to reduced eyelid excursion. In the extreme form, this stage is sometimes called frozen globe. Of course, the keratinization, as shown in the third and in the fourth image, results in a significant deterioration of visual acuity and finally in blindness. There are other clinical findings that are not part of the Foster classification. First, as shown here on the left, is the limbitis. It occurs in 12 to 28 percent of the eyes and may be regarded as a distinctive sign of ocular MMP that is associated with a more severe disease progression. Eyelid malposition and trichiasis eventually develop and together with secondary dry eye, chronic limbitis and subsequent limbal stem cell failure contribute to keratopathy. Corneal defects may develop followed by superinfections and neovascularization. Further findings might be a cataract and about 15% of the patients have or will develop a glaucoma. Apart from Foster's, Mondino staging system is regularly used. It is based on the loss of inferior phonic step. There are several other clinical scoring systems for MMP with ocular involvement, but there is no consensus which is the best to use. All systems so far were limited by the lack of direct correlation with disease progression, and therefore no system can be used to predict need for immunosuppression. The cicatrizing conjunctivitis assessment tool published by Ong tries to implement staging of the disease as well as activity. In this tool, the clinical parameters that are used in foster staging are combined with quantification of the fornix depth and conjunctival hyperemia as a surrogate parameter for inflammation. Although it is a bit more complicated to use, we think it has advantages to the other systems and we use it on our clinic. There are several systemic or ocular surface diseases that can mimic MMP and cannot be distinguished from true MMP with ocular involvement. In the 2016 Bowman Lecture on Scarring Conjunctivitis, Professor Dart summarizes 35 conditions that might cause cicatrizing conjunctivitis. The most common one is drug-induced scarring. As most of the other diseases causing a similar clinic do not require systemic immunosuppressive drug therapy, it is very important to distinguish MMP from any other diagnosis. The main take-home messages are that because of the common ocular affection, the often side-threatening course and the possible very difficult therapy, we ophthalmologists should be aware of the clinic and really need to make an effort to diagnose MMP as early as possible. 
In case of negative diagnostics, the diagnosis should also be established clinically after possible differential diagnosis have been ruled out. In doubt or in lack of experience, especially regarding the systemic immunosuppressive therapy, you might consider referring the patient to a specialized center. Thank you very much for your attention. As I am not here today, um, Professor Galing will of course be very happy to answer any questions you have regarding my talk. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right.